Once upon a time, in ancient Rome, there lived a god named Faunus. He was a rustic god, revered for his powers over the forest, fields, and plains. His legend had been passed down for generations, and he was considered one of the oldest deities in the Roman religion and myth. Because of his ability to make cattle fertile, he was also known as Inuus in some parts of the ancient world. As a god of fertility, Faunus was always in high demand. However, he was also worshipped as a goddess of prophecy under the name of Fatuus. His oracles were located in Tiber's sacred grove, Albunia's well, and on the Aventine Hill in ancient Rome. People would come from far and wide to consult him about their future and seek his guidance. Faunus was famous for his oracular responses, which were given in Saturnian verse. He had an incredible gift of revealing the future through dreams and voices that he communicated to those who slept within his precincts. It was a common practice for people to use the fleeces of sacrificed lambs as bedding, hoping to receive a vision from the god himself. According to Virgil, Faunus was also a legendary king of the Latins. He was equated with the Greek god Pan in literature, and in Roman depictions, he was often seen as a horned god. Some historians argue that Faunus and Favonius, one of the Roman wind gods, are the same entity. Despite all his powers and influence, Faunus remained true to his roots and duties, preserving the beauty and fertility of the natural world. His legacy and legend continued to thrive, making him one of the most revered and beloved gods of the ancient Roman world. Faunus was a beloved king of Latium, known for his contributions to agriculture and cattle breeding. He was widely celebrated as a tutelary deity of the land, and his sister and wife Fauna or Fatua shared a similarly esteemed status. Together, they were revered all across the land. In addition to the Fauni that inhabited the wild forests, there were also the infamous satyrs, who were known for their wild and orgiastic behavior. These drunken followers of Dionysus, the Greek god of wine, were connected to the fauns by educated, Hellenizing Romans, who believed that they were from a similar origin. Among these revered deities, one goddess stood out, Bona Dea. Many believe that she was associated with Fauna, and celebrated in conjunction with her and Faunus. Her stories were just as captivating as those of the fauns, and her connection to them only served to further cement her place among the pantheon of Roman gods. All these fascinating details and many more were preserved in the ancient myths and legends that had been passed down over time. And to this day, the stories of Faunus, Fauna, Satyrs, and the many other deities of the Roman world continue to captivate and inspire awe in those who hear them. Faunus was a popular Roman god associated with agriculture. He was believed to bring fertility to crops and had a special relationship with the countryside. In many ways, he was similar to the Greek god Pan, who was worshipped by shepherds in Arcadia. As Roman mythology became more influenced by Greek mythology in the 3rd and 2nd centuries BCE, many Roman gods were identified with Greek deities. Faunus was often linked with Pan through Interpretatio Romana, but some still viewed them as separate entities. Virgil, a famous Roman poet, mentioned both Faunus and Pan in his Aeneid, describing Faunus as a rural god and Pan as a god loved by shepherds. Interestingly, while Pan was always depicted with horns, the original Roman Faunus was not. Over time, however, many Roman depictions of Faunus began to show him with horns. This cultural conflation of the two gods reflected the merging of Roman and Greek beliefs and the belief that Faunus and Pan were, in many ways, the same deity. Despite this, both gods remained popular in Roman mythology and were celebrated in festivals and worshipped by the people. Once upon a time, there was a Roman god named Faunus, also known as Lupercus. He was a priest of Faunus, who was worshipped during a festival called Lupercalia, which was celebrated on February 15. During this festival, priests wore goatskins, and hit passers-by with whips made of goatskin. There were two more festivals conducted to honor Faunus, called Faunalia. The first one was conducted on February 13, in the Temple of Faunus located on Tiber Island. 
On this occasion, peasants brought rustic offerings and danced for amusement. The second faunalia was conducted on December 5th, where Faunus was revered, and peasants brought him offerings. Euhemeristic accounts suggested Faunus as a Latin king, son of Picus and Canons. After his death, he was worshipped as the god Fatuus and was revered in a sacred forest outside Tivoli, which was known as Tiber since Etruscan times. The Tibertine Sibyl used to sit in the sacred forest, and his numinous presence was identified by wolf skins along with wreaths and goblets. In Nanos Dionysiaca, Faunus accompanied Dionysus during the latter's Indian campaign. Faunus was known as a playful and mischievous deity who took pleasure in amusing people. Thus, Faunus was revered as a god of nature, forests, and fertility, and was associated with wild animals, such as wolves and goats. Do you want to explore more Greek mythology stories? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.